Hi, folks. I'm coming to you today because there's something that lays heavy on my heart, and that is placement. I am seeing and hearing, and it breaks my heart to no end because I feel for people that they feel guilty and they feel that they feel their loved one because they have to place their loved one in a facility. Folks, I want to just tell you, my heart goes out to you all. I may have to place Matt someday. There is no reason to feel guilty. I can't tell you how to feel. But I do want to say this. Feeling bad and sad for your loved one is different than feeling guilty. And yes, I will feel bad and I will feel sad when that does have to go into a home. But I will not feel guilty because I know I took care of him to the best of my ability. And that's what you've done. You took care of your loved one to the best of your ability. Let me tell you something, folks, and I'm not going to sugarcoat this. And if sugarcoating is what you're looking for, I'm not your girl. I am from New Jersey. I'm my father's daughter, and I tell it like it is. And I know what this disease does. I've seen it up close too many times. This disease is a meat grinder. It will chew you up and spit you out. Not only does it destroy your loved one, it can destroy you too caregivers. Our health deteriorates from the stress. You did not feel your loved one. The health care system failed because we can't get help. Now, I don't want to hear it if you're a Republican or Democrat. I don't care. It's not a party issue. It's a human being issue. We need help. And it's a shame what we have to do to get help. But I want to tell my friends out there, it's okay to know your limitations. Some people place their loved ones because they know they can't take care of them. They know they can't handle it. And that's okay. It's okay to know, you know what? I can't, I can't take changing diapers on my mother, father, spouse, whoever. That's okay. Not everyone is cut out for it. And I don't care. How many books you read about dementia, Alzheimer's, whatever your loved one has? Nothing, but nothing can compare you to living with it. Just like reading a, a war stories. Yeah, I could read about war stories, but until I'm in a war, I don't know what that's like. And folks, we are in a war. We're in a war to keep our sanity in an insane situation. We're trying to keep ourselves together. We have to care about ourselves also. And that's not being selfish. It's survival. Especially if you have young children. Or uh, an adult child with a disability like I do. I have to keep myself as sane as possible. Because I have to take care of Josh. And this is hard on our children too. Our children are the hidden casualties. Make no mistake about it, our children do suffer because they're watching their father or mother or grandmother deteriorate. And it is, as you know, awful. So, you know, when the time comes and I have to place Matt, I have to place him. I never made Matt a promise. What I did promise Matt was I will take care of you as long as I physically can. And as long as I can do your care, once you get to a point that I can't take care of you, and I know I can't, then I'm going to have to place you. And then, of course, he talks about killing himself. It is a very hard situation, folks. Really hard. I um, don't know really how some people do it. I don't even know if I have what it takes to see Matt deteriorate and die in front of me. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to handle it. Um, I, you know, I never made my mother-in-law promise either that I would keep her at home. Did I feel bad when I had to place my mother-in-law at home? Yes. Did I feel guilty? No. Because I couldn't do it. She required too much care. 
and I wasn't getting any help from anybody. So um, it was time to place her for her own um, health and well-being as well as ours, especially mine, since I was the one who was doing everything. So that's what I wanted to say. Um, we need to share our stories, share our journeys. Um, it's important for people to hear it. This is a growing epidemic. Baby boomers, and I am one of them, is going to get hit hard. I hope there's a cure for my son's generation. I really do. And um, I feel sorry, I do, for my son's generation because they're going to be taking care of parents. Because baby boomers are getting it younger. Matt is 56 at diagnosis. And now he's 64. So that's what I had to say, folks. I have to say a lot more, but I'm not going to right now. But cut yourself some slack, caregivers. You can only do so much. And we have no control. There's no controlling um, Alzheimer's or any other kind of dementia. And the things I said 16, 15 years ago, people are saying now. Um, this disease tears families apart. This disease is, um, it, it is a monster. And you just have to try to, you know, deal with your situation as best as you can. Uh, that's different things for different folks. And I just want to tell you, caregivers, a kiss and a hug, and that I love you all. Bye-bye.